Remember the opening to the Olympics, the drag queen. That was ridiculous. We well, if you want an explanation for today's politics, it's not really political. We have under our system, they have a right to try to do this. We have the rainbow cult, some LGBTQIA practitioners, and I don't care whether you're gay or not, get your freak on in your bedroom, that's your business. But we have a cult, and that cult is attempting to impose itself as the official faith of the United States. You can't take Christianity, you can't take Judaism, you can't take Hinduism, you can't take Islam, you can't take Confucianism, you can't take Sikh religions and impose it on the people. But you can take rainbow all day long and you can plaster the hallways, the classrooms, the sidewalks, the crosswalks, the buildings, the White House, the Capitol building. You can force people to put up with it. You can fly the symbol, the rainbow flag, onto the American flag on government flagpoles. You can put that stuff that the rest of the world hates out in the front with the opening act for the Olympics, and nobody's supposed to be able to do anything about it. That's imposition of a faith on the country, and what are we? We have a right to be free from somebody forcing a religion, faith, a cult, a discipline, a way of life, or anything on us. So what is going on with American politics is you have the acolytes, the disciples, etc., of a new faith trying to impose this on the public. You have a conglomeration that started off 55 years ago of lesbians, L, gays, G, bisexuals. They added the T, the trans thing, which really disturbs a lot of homosexuals, I'm advised. And then you got the whole thing with the rest of the alphabet, the questioning or queer. You've got the intersectionality, and they have allied with pedophilia, they've had a, uh, had a allied with this thing with the transsexual bit, and I have lesbian acquaintances who said they detest that. They like pretty girls, and here's something they think is pretty girl, and it's still got a dick. They don't like that. Or some guy talking about he's dealing with a guy, he likes guys, and it turns out to be a girl masquerading as a guy. You've completely destroyed girl watching and boy watching because nobody knows what they're looking at. To ally with the pedophile, you have a whole lot of gay folk that have some very bad memories of getting turned out by some pervert who was a, a pedophile, and they don't like that thing. So as one person that I used to work with out in L.A., he swings, but as he said, just because you are Christian doesn't mean you support Branch Davidian or you supported Reverend Jim Jones serving Kool-Aid at large church picnics. Just because you are a Muslim doesn't mean you support Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Just because somebody's gay doesn't mean they support the rainbow cult. So under the name of being fair to gay folk, you are supposed to be indulgent of the LGBTQIA cult, which is something entirely different. Now, as far as your freedom in the bedroom, I can tell you some, it's funny, a couple of cases I had as a defense lawyer way back 1979 and 1980. I'll just relay one of them and you'll get the point. This guy had been married just two years to this woman, and they broke up. So he kept the house he had for six years before he got married. She was ordered to return the keys. She didn't return all of them, and she wanted to go by the house and get some stuff out of there. So she drives by on the lunch hour, drives around the block, doesn't see any cars there, because dude and his girlfriend parked around the block, walked around. So she takes her key, goes in, and she finds her ex-husband and his new girlfriend on the couch going down on each other. So she steps out on the front porch. There's a cop driving by. She flags them down. The cop goes in, busts both of them for unnatural sex acts. Three to 15 years in the state penitentiary for having mutual oral sex voluntarily. 
So it got funny. One old white guy on the jury said, wait a minute, Laurie Brown, is you saying that if you goes down on your wife like my wife and I go down on each other, we can get three to 15 years in the penitentiary? The judge said, that's exactly right. Now you have a Fifth Amendment right. I'd suggest you remain quiet. He said, Jesus Christ, what are we here for? So anyway, they acquitted the guy, but it was jury nullification because they had him dead to rights. But I mean, damn. See, that's cause two adults, heterosexual, were busted for their sexual activities in the bedroom. So I'm firmly of the opinion that's been 45 years ago. You know, what you do in your bedroom is your own damn business. But when you start getting out of it and you got a float and honey, go up there and pull the man's thing. He wants you to pull his thing for him. You know, that's getting a little out of hand. So it is what it is. So we have politics where, for some reason, the Democratic Party seems to have embraced the rainbow cult. And you have Trump looked at as the Baba Yaga who's trying to stop that, which is in the context of so many people in mainstream media and in Hollywood swinging along with the cult. They hate him as an enemy. So we don't really have politics on issues. We have politics on passion. And the people that are solidly behind this run the number one propaganda engine in the, the world, which is Hollywood. So they are doing this thing where they create a villain. They've taken somebody that black folk who are into something, Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, all of the black civil rights leaders, all of the rap artists, all of the black entertainers, they love to hang with Trump. He didn't do anything any differently now, but the media has made him a Baba Yaga, so everybody thinks he's a pariah because tell a lie long enough and loud enough, you can get anybody to believe it. And they've been telling that tale for a long damn time. Somebody on your team is doing something, you rally around the damn flag and whatever seems to be offensive to the people that speak for your team, you're supposed to go against whether or not it makes practical sense for you. Now, black voters need to understand something that black voters used to understand and every other ethnic group understands. What you do in politics is exclusively about benefits. And every now and then you show a political party that presumes your loyalty, that it's not about loyalty, it's about delivering results. So, you know, four years, you can spare that even if it's bad. So you go and support the other party just to show one party that you mean business. Now, the black voter has an interesting situation. No matter what the Democratic Party does not do for them, they'll get their support. No matter what the Republican Party may try to do for them, they won't get their support. That means essentially neither party has an incentive to do a damn thing for you because one gets your support no matter what, and the other one will not get your support no matter what. So you just maintain whatever they feel like giving you, and it kind of works out in a strange way. Uh, You've seen those commercials for World Wildlife Fund and ASPCA. Oh, poor Oscar. He's chained in his kennel in the backyard. And this winter will be cold and he won't low love. Send $19 a month to ASPCA so this animal can no love. The tiger once used to be king of the jungle, now no more. He's threatened with extinction. Send $19 a month to the World Wildlife Fund. Well, Jamal, he's down and out, and he has been to prison, and he's a victim of white supremacy. Send $19 a month to the Save a Negro Fund so he can know love. You know, it gets downright ridiculous. Yeah, it does. You're right, man. But what was your instant reaction when you seen that at the Olympics? It's like, here it goes. See, I know people abroad, and they tell me what they think about these things. Joseph, what the hell are they doing, man? Do they not understand that we detest and despise this? What are they trying to do to us? I don't know, man. It's crazy, isn't it? 
Uh, so what are you trying to do? This looks like the Catholic Church burning, you know, heretics at the stake. This looks like the Crusades. This looks like jihad. You know, this looks like Exodus, where you exterminated everybody coming up out of Egypt, a form of ethnic cleansing because they didn't believe in monotheism. You know, what is this? This looks like something that doesn't work. This looks like what the Nazis did because you were inconvenient and there was the master race and you were unto mention, you know, unto mensch, under people, subhuman. You know, this is what this looks like. You've got actualites and people who are disciples and they're spreading the righteous faith where we hate each other, we hate ourselves, we have no obligation to be what we were born, we hate ourselves so badly we can mutilate our bodies to become something else. And we're fluid. I mean, it's your right if you want to, that's the American way, but it doesn't mean that it's the thing we ought to support. And then by the way, Look at what's happening with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter until it became X. They still lapse back sometimes. YouTube, you can't say certain things. Not where it's pornographic. You can have full frontal nudity in and out, all kinds of freak perverted stuff. It doesn't make anybody any difference. But say something that's outside of the party line and you get slapped down, restricted, you get demonetized and every other damn thing. Uh, YouTube banned me permanently. Not YouTube, uh, Facebook banned me permanently. I had the maximum number of friends, and guess what? I'd never posted anything. They did it because they said I wasn't me, and then I kept insisting, and they said it was because of my postings on X. And I've never pointed or posted anything pornographic. It's always been political or social commentary. So in, in other words, you can't say which that kind of thing that the First Amendment is designed to protect. It might hurt somebody's feelings. Oh, my God, you're shaming somebody. No guilt. Well, that's how humans control themselves, shame and guilt. But you're not supposed to do that. So anything you want to do is okay. Just go do it. Doesn't care. You have no standards, no duty, honor, obligation, responsibility, accountability. You don't have to make where you live a better, safer, more secure place filled with economic prosperity, sense of purpose and cause. You don't have to make where you live a place of public peace, dignity, and order. Anything you want to do, you can do it. You can turn around and be a coward and run. You can sit there and fake anything out you want to do. You have no obligations. That is not how humanity got from cave to condo. And, and take masculinity out of, the pro out of the equation. One of the reasons we have such hell in the hood and in the hallway is there's no manhood out there. They don't teach these brothers these young white guys, these young Asian guys, these young Mexican guys, uh, these young Native Americans, how to be men, how to have a fist fight, shake hands afterwards and leave it. They don't teach people to be logical, reasonable, rational, and under self-control. It's all about the sanctity and sacred nature of your emotions. Express yourself. Men need to learn to be in touch with their emotions, to cry and shout and let it all hang out instead of being so uptight and uh, under such self-control. Now, last I checked, all of these animals, species, and stuff are endangered. Why? Because we are killing them, right? We kill better than anything else ever been on this planet. It's in our DNA. We are the apex planet. A predator on the planet Earth. We eat anything we feel like eating, kill anything we feel like killing for sport. There's nothing that can resist us. Bacteria may take us out, but you can't see them. 
So this thing that kills better than anything else, it's going to be like any other predator. It kills itself. Lions kill each other. Tigers kill each other. Panthers kill each other. Alligators and crocodiles kill each other. Sharks kill each other, etc. You name it. How do they deal with maintaining some stability within their species without killing themselves off? They have culture, which may be very primitive or more complicated, but we teach these cultures. It's socialization and acculturation. When you do not acculturate and socialize the male child from infancy about the duty and obligations and accountabilities of being a man who is part of the apex predator cast for the planet Earth, you have trouble. You want to protect him, but if you don't condition him to what's inside of him, that ravening beast that can kill all other beasts, is going to still be there, and it comes out when least expected. That's what I was talking about, what happens out there on the streets when you got cop and citizen out there. We don't teach people how to deal with that beast anymore, so it's in hiding, and it comes, and then it goes at each other.